If you're ever asked to analyze a student's uh, oral reading fluency at a context, it usually has to do with looking at their word, uh, reading of words um, in isolation. And meaning that the teacher gives them a list of words and they read the words and there's no context clues to check to see if it's right or wrong. So um, something like this, um, the student would just read the list and based on their oral response, we could see if they have acquired the phonics rule or not. Now, um, this type of list, let's just look at this li list right here. Uh, I want you to take a minute. I want you to look it over. And I want you to look to see if you can spot what they're getting right and what they're getting wrong. Now, remember, we've done uh, a lot of phonics patterns in the past. These are all, by the way, single syllable words. So when I ask you to analyze this, I want you to look at single syllable words, right? And I want you to think about like which one of these, these rules, phonics patterns, they're, they're, they have a strength in. Which one are they struggling with? Remember this list? We did this in a previous section. So as you read this over, since you're, so, so when you do stuff in isolation, it's always like a phonics assessment. Think about as you read this list, what they're, what they're doing right and what they're struggling with from this list here, okay? So here, I'll go back to that. Sorry, I pulled away too soon. Take a moment now, one minute on your own, analyze it, go. Look at what they're getting right and wrong. I'm going to start with what they're getting correct. Um, I always like to write my essays and whatever the, the strength is, I start with that. And then I, I write the area of weakness after and then, the, and then it leads into the instructional strategy. But let's just look at the strength. They're getting these words right. What is going on in these words? Well, grass, spun, stood. Uh, these all have what? Uh, these all have a, they're, they're all single syllable words, and they all have a blend, a constant blend, right? In the beginning, uh, in the word. Okay, so the student's getting the blends right. How about what else is going on? Well, I see some uh, leap and stood. What are those? Student is, uh, uh, the student um, is getting some Vowel uh, diagraphs, correct, right? Just based off that, they're getting vowel diagraphs. Two vowels that make one sound like in leap and stood, that's a vowel diagraph, okay? What else is going on? Uh, quick, well, they get quick right. Well, now, what is this? Qu and the k are examples of what? Constant diagraphs. So we could say, just by looking at this real quick, we could say, hey, the student is getting constant diagraphs and vowel diagraphs and blends right. And here's some examples. We could say they're getting the initial blend right. They're getting the initial and end diagraphs right. Lots of things we could point out. And again, they're getting all this right in single syllable words. Okay. All right. Now, what? And they're all short vowel too. Well, well, that that's not true. They're not all short vowel. Uh, it's a selection of vowel sounds. Okay. Now let's look at where they go wrong. So we look to see what they get right. Now we're going to look to see where they go wrong. Look at the words right, bright, height. What do they have in common? Well, they're, they're all words that have the I-G-H. Is that right? Now, I-G-H is considered a cluster. And it's considered a constant cluster, but it has a special name. When we have three things that make one sound, we call it a constant cluster known as a trigraph. Three things that make one sound. So we could talk about how they, they have a gap in that and do an instructional strategy to work on, on that stuff, right? Lots of different strategies we could use to help them, but um, we, could, uh, we could do some type of like uh, say it and move it activity where they, met, where they do that, where they work on that constant cluster. But, but right now that is definitely an issue. There's other things too. Can you spot what's going on here? Here and here. Well, this one here is a is a. Um, it's actually not, actually it's not a VCE word. 
these are these are these well actually i should say they are they are vowel constant vowel they are these both of these have that pattern in but they're also irregular do you see that move does not make a long o min ut does not make a long u let me write that down again even though it's vce it's not making um the o say its name it's not move and minute, minute, it means that um, it's not long you, min you, min you ut. So what does it mean? It means that these words, move and minute, um, it's not a VCE word. It's actually a high frequency, irregular sight word. So we could talk about how there's also a gap in irregular uh, sight words. These are words that you can't use phonics to decode, like you can't use the VCE silent E rule to decode this word, right? Doesn't work. And uh, it's a word that we want students to rapidly recognize it. And, and you know what, move and, and minute, these are words that we want students to memorize. So they have a gap in irregular sight word vocab. Okay, team, so looking at this one right here, we can tell a lot by the student's phonics whenever a student reads uh, a list in isolation. We can tell what they did right and what they did wrong. Try in your analysis of this um, to take a minute and identify what they did right and then, and then take a minute and identify what they did wrong. Try and spot at least one strength and at least one area of need, okay? All right, this is uh, analyzing reading fluency when a student reads a text. Uh, reads words in isolation, okay? Um, there's other things I could say, but uh, I will say them. Because <laughs> if I don't say it, um, you know, uh, you'll never hear it, maybe. Um, when you do this type of assessment, you're testing their phonics, but you could also do a very similar assessment using nonsense words or non-words. Now, here's the difference between a non-word and a real word. Words like uh, fib, uh, me meb, ma, no, that says ma, uh, move, uh, min, mon, mon, or uh, ch, ib. Okay, okay, I just made those up. Sorry. <sighs> Trying to find out nonsense words fib, mon, chip. Okay. Now, these are reading words in isolation, and this is the type of assessment, non reading non-words, which is very similar to reading printed words. But here's the difference. Having a student read nonsense words or non-words, the student has no way of self-correcting the mistake. So if they say a word like uh, they're reading high and they say hig, but then there's a chance it could be like hig high because hig doesn't make sense, right? Whereas with non-words, they say fib. I mean, they, fib doesn't mean anything. So it could have really been anything. There's no clue. So I just want to throw out that if you ever have a case study where a student reads words in isolation, it's a phonics assessment. But if they read nonsense words in isolation, then it's a 100% phonics um, assessment question. Because there is absolutely no way that they can use, they can sound, they can test if it sounds correct or not. I hope that makes sense to you, okay? So nonsense words are 150% phonics assessments, pure phonics assessments. Reading words in isolation is also an assessment question, but there's a chance that they could read the word and fix it. Like they'd be like, right? I mean, I mean, they'd be like rig and then be like, right. And the teacher would have to mark that there was a self-correction because the student heard that, you know, rigged, you know, didn't sound right and they fixed it. All right. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Okay, team. Okay, team. Uh, words in isolation. Phonics assessment. Remember this. Whenever you have something like this, try and identify at least one thing they do right and at least one error in the, uh, in the read aloud of those words in isolation, okay? One thing they got right in phonics and one thing that held them back in their read aloud of these words in phonics, okay? All right, let's keep going.